Thank you to Blizzard for sponsoring this episode. Homunculi are beings created by the first children by incorporating genetic elements of other animals into humans. In Chimere, homunculi are common enough that even though few have actually seen them, most accept the premise of their existence. What they actually look like, however, is not commonly understood. This has led many to assume that primates are homunculi, humans mixed with the homeybox genes of cats, bears, and other beasts. Monkeys in particular, which are quite common in the known world, were until fairly recently assumed to be cat demons. Unfortunately, this has resulted in a number of misplaced prosecutions, although many see them as benevolent demons or bringers of luck. It is becoming increasingly common to understand them as playful, mischievous, or clever animals that they are. Primates were first brought to Chimere during the Oligocene. These adapiforms are not in the groups we would call monkeys here on Earth, having diverged before the first true monkeys, and although not closely related to the lemurs of Madagascar, they are often given this name by Earth naturalists as a comparison in physiology and niche, if not a close phylogenetic relationship. Adapiform primates enjoyed tremendous success on the eastern continent, radiating into a wide range of arboreal, terrestrial, and gliding forms. The first true monkeys in Chimere were brought during the second harvest as the portal repopulated its territory following the dynastic extinction. These were New World monkeys. They had widespread success in the mostly closed rainforests common in the northern continent at the time. But once titanosaurs returned to the known world two million years later, the forests reopened. Those monkeys specialized for the dense rainforests of both Earth and previously on Chimere, Canopy specialists were relegated to pockets of dense vegetation. Another wave of New World monkeys came during the late Miocene, but they also struggled to establish themselves in the open forests now prevalent in Chimere. The jungles of the Crescent have for many millions of years been so saturated with wetlands that they do not appeal to titanosaurs. Although many wetlands harbor descendants of the initial New World monkey boom in denser vegetation, this jungle is a sort of utopia for how long it's been unappealing to titans. None of the monkey species of the Amazon today are found in the Crescent jungles, but all of the types are represented. As on Earth, howler monkeys are the largest New World monkeys on Chimere. The giant howler can weigh up to 90 pounds and make a deep call that is 155 decibels, loud enough to rupture eardrums and be heard five miles away. They are large enough that they spend most of the time on the forest floor compared to their smaller kin, but they are still proficient climbers and use this ability to escape tigers and megaraptorans, which are the top predators in their environments. Capuchins and squirrel monkeys are the most successful of the New World monkeys, both with several species in the crescent jungle alone. A generalist diet, high intelligence, and low dietary needs due to small size contributes to their success. Species of capuchin and squirrel monkey are found throughout the Titan Gardens and wetlands of the known world as well. Night monkeys are, as their name implies, nocturnal. They avoid competition with diurnal species by foraging while other monkeys sleep. They stick to the canopy as the leopards that are the monkey's most common predators mostly patrol at night while the cockatrices sleep. Marmosets and tamarins make up the smallest of Chimere's primates. They are highly active animals and will eat just about anything from tree gum and insects to seeds and sap. Although not as widespread as capuchins and squirrel monkeys, these tiny monkeys are found throughout much of the known world. The first Old World monkeys were brought from Asia 12 million years ago. These were apes, and generally found success in the patches of dense forest alongside New World monkeys. A harvest in South Africa later in the Miocene brought animals more closely resembling Old World monkeys than we understand them, but they were unable to establish themselves in the dense forests already packed with monkeys and apes, 
or in the titan gardens that flying leavers thrived in, and the old world monkeys from this harvest went extinct shortly after arrival. Things were much more in favor of old world monkeys during the Southeast Asian harvest of the Pleistocene. It was at this time that macaques had just reached China. After humans, macaques on Earth have the most widespread range of any primate, and by a pretty wide margin. The success of this genus on Chimere is equally ubiquitous. They can eat just about anything, are comfortable in grassland, forest, mountain, and wetlands. Macaques also seem to do better in the Titan Gardens, as they are strong and energetic climbers, but quite cursorial on the ground. The common monkey is a macaque that originated from southern islands in the Free States. During the Mercantile Age, this macaque was a popular companion on ships for their intelligent, comfort around humans, ease of training, and eagerness to hunt pests. They quickly moved from ship to port, and in modern Chimere, common monkeys are a formidable invasive species, found in most Chimere ports and surrounding areas. They form vast networks of interconnected troops, with limited culture and language, and some monkeys will even regularly hop on a ship they know will go between two port cities and return home after a little vacation that they know they will be allowed on as long as they present sailors with some form of payment, typically a dead rodent, often from the ship, but a monkey's fare is colloquial for misrepresenting some of your own work since monkeys are known to either kill rodents on shore or steal from a cat or some other small predator to pretend it is their payment. They will also pay for their fare with coins and other shiny objects that they have stolen, since they observe this as a lot of transaction. Common monkeys remain popular companions on ship for dealing with pests and entertaining crew, and will sometimes remain on a single ship for many years. Macaques are notorious for carrying zoonotic viruses transmissible to humans. Although the hereditary magic of Chimerans gives them significant fortitude against bacterial infections and other microbe-based diseases, and most viral infections can be suppressed, this suppression often pressures viruses to have more incubation time and show fewer symptoms. This means that the few times a virus reaches pandemic proportions and lethality, it is an extremely aggressive disease and ravages local peoples. These viruses take so long to incubate and mutate among Chimeran populations that it is only recently that scientists of the Empire have managed to trace around half of all viral pandemics to the spread of the common macaque. Most peoples are more inclined to blame the merchants they feel are swindling them than the cute monkeys dancing about on the ships, especially since merchants are the, usually the ones incubating the diseases, and the conclusion has not received widespread acceptance by Chimerans. There are two macaques on the Housey Prairie. One is small and generally sticks to the trees. The other, called the Kalani by the Shu, are technically of the genus Paradolicopithecus, is noteworthy for a rare trait in primates, bipediality. They run quite swiftly on all fours, but most of their lives is spent on two legs. Like humans, they have lost most of their body hair for efficient thermoregulation as they forage and hunt during the day. They use tools and have interconnected culture groups. Many speculate that they may be on an independent path towards convergence with humans and more than just their gait, but this is probably just projection. The largest and most dangerous macaque is the Gotwat of Picardia. These monkeys are omnivores, but, like the chimpanzees they are often compared to by Earth naturalists, they will cooperatively hunt prey. Being able to climb makes them very dangerous compared to hyenas, and they will quite readily take to hunting chimerans. Usually these hunts are not for prey, but to remove competition and threats. Groups of males are known to post up on roads and attack travelers, making them one of the reasons Picardian rarely travel alone, and never unarmed. There have been warfare-scaled efforts to exterminate them, but bands of males will stray far to hunt Picardians and the matriarchal troops of females and young are increasingly elusive to evade these counterattacks. Efforts have thus far proven unsuccessful on a large scale, despite hundreds of Gotwat males being hunted. 
In fact, many call the Culls a failure since the surviving Gotwat seem to be increasing in their stealth, ferocity, and thoroughness in attack. The most recent substantial harvest was through Africa in the late Pleistocene. It was from here that baboons came to Chimere. Baboons are now the most common primate on the Housie Prairie. The common baboon is a subspecies of the modern olive baboon. They are identical in size and lifestyle. Although most common on the prairie, they are found throughout the northern continent, in most habitats aside from wetlands. Theriopithecus, today represented by the gelata, also has a representative on Chimere, the giant or highland monkey. Males of this species often reach 300 pounds. They are exclusive to the highlands of the western continent. Their ferocious tusks and menacing snarl of males is used for intimidating rivals and scaring off predators. Like many primates, new males are known to kill the young of ousted males if the takeover comes to a fight, although their general preference of intimidation over combat means that if the old male submits, his young will survive, meaning that infanticide is a rare occurrence compared to baboons and some macaques. They only eat grasses common on the highland steppes. They are the only grazing monkeys in the known world. Their large troops of over a hundred animals live in caves and wander during the day to forage. During the dry season, they usually travel to the coast, where the surf sustains more grass than the interior, although this region is the coldest in the known world, and they retreat to the north where the more nutritious grasses are when the rains return. They are one of the most common herbivores in the highlands, their habit of sleeping in caves keeping them safe from a majority of predators. Although recent times have brought the largest and most successful monkeys to Chimere, new and old world monkeys have a long and triumphant history in the known world. Future episodes will cover the apes, which although technically old world monkeys, are a subject I wanted to cover exclusively. Like most humans on Earth, most Chimerians consider new and old world monkeys to be one group and apes to be separate, even though apes are nested within the old world monkeys. Thank you so much to Grisat for sponsoring this episode. Got a chance to pull out all of my primatology books from college. Studying is a step I always enjoy, but was particularly fun for this episode. My first professional gig in scientific illustrations was for my human evolution professor's textbook, and that required a lot of studying which came into play here. We'll feature even more heavily in my ape and hominin episodes. Thank you everyone for watching, and to my Patreons for your support. Cheers to Grisat for this sponsorship. Have a fantastic day everyone. Cheers folks! Hey.